Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy, And I'm her daughter, Mickey. And welcome to Kitty Nomics. Yay! It's another fun-filled Friday of Kids Financial Literacy, Kitty Nomics with us. <laughs> I am hoping everybody has had a good Friday to start. We are excited for this week's Kitty Nomics because it is another way to try and earn money as a child and earn scholarship money. So I'm really excited because, you know, some people may think this is not about financial literacy, but it really is. And I really am going to enjoy this topic today because it's something that you may not have ever, ever thought of. But Kittynomics is here to plant some ideas in your mind and seeds and watch them grow to awesome things. So you may not have thought about this topic before, but it may be something that you may have interest in. So today we are going to be talking about how to earn money and scholarships through pageantry. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of a pageant or what is a pageant, but we have an uber special guest on today, Miss Natasha Allen. And I'm we're ready. going to, hi, Miss Natasha. <laughs> So before we get started with Miss Natasha, let's let me get into my housekeeping items. Did I? Oh my gosh, the chat is disabled again. Why is it keep doing this to me? I am so sorry, guys. Hold on. Let me enable the chat box. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Oh, where's the chat box? Chat, chat, chat. Everyone. Okay. All right. Now, is the chat box, show chat. Okay, guys, hopefully the chat, is the chat working now? Can you guys check to see, is chat box working? I don't see it on my end for some, what is going on? All right. It's on my end, so I'm not sure if everyone else can, but I can see it. Okay, all right, let me get into it and then I will find chat again. Oh, here it is, here's chat. Can, let me, um, hold on everybody. Let me make sure that there. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm just writing this in the chat. Can you message back that you guys can answer in the chat? Okay. All right. Welcome to Kittynomics, everybody. Yay. I see the chats coming in now, so I know it's working. Hi, Brielle. Hi, Layla. Thanks. Uh, thank you, girls, for doing that. All right. So, welcome to Kittynomics. I'd like to welcome all of the sure um uh, sorry i'd like to welcome all of the new kids that are on kidnomics today so anybody that has signed up in the past week welcome 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 now if you are new to kidnomics don't worry that's awesome please remember just to type um that you're new in the chat box and the kids will welcome you okay and then of course welcome back to all of our kidnomics kids that's here week after week thank you so much for coming back we love you for being here okay all right so what is Kittynomics about? Can I read? Sure, but read loud and clear so everybody can hear you. Okay. Kittynomics will help kids ages eight plus to develop a healthy, a healthy relationship toward finan financial literacy, helping to start off kids on the right path to have a successful financial future. To have a successful financial future. That's what we want for everybody, right? That's what we want for you out there. That's what I want for her. That's what I want for me and Miss Natasha, everybody. We want everybody to have a successful financial uh, future. And that's what you get with financial literacy, right? Okay. So let's just get into some housekeeping items uh, before we get started today, right? Now, all of you guys probably know our housekeeping items, the ones that are here week after week. But if you don't, uh, please remember that each Kittynomics webinar is recorded. So I will upload this webinar up to our YouTube channel. It should be up before 8 p.m. this evening. I'm going to try and get it there before 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So that's Friday tonight. Um, so in case you've missed a part of it or you have to use the bathroom or whatever, or you're watching this back, you can always do it um, and check out all of our other videos on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. We have a a lot. I think we're up to 100 videos now. We're close to that number. So there is a lot of videos there for you to catch up and watch um, anything about financial literacy. We've covered an, uh, 
an array of topics uh, for financial literacy, okay? Now, also remember, we have kids ages eight to 13, but sometimes we have kids younger and sometimes we have people that are older. So please remember in the chat box to please always be kind, right? You can choose to be a lot of things in this world, but always choose kindness, okay? So please remember in the chat box to always be kind and respectful and also no spamming, okay? No spamming. No spamming in the chat box because Miss Stacy has to read all of your stuff to answer the questions or um, ask any questions that you guys may have. So I gotta, I have to make sure that um, we keep the, the chat box clear, okay? Um, and also remember, we don't wanna see any personal, <laughs> yes, Leila, no spamming. <laughs> And also remember, we want to make sure that we kind we maintain a healthy and safe environment here in our kidnomics community. So remember, no personal information in the chat box. I never want to see your personal addresses, your email addresses, your your exact ages, um, your phone numbers, never anything that we can personally identify you by because we want to keep you guys safe, right? In our kidnomics community. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right. What's next? What's next? Roll call. Roll call. All right, let's see. Where is everybody joining us from today? Which country, if you are new, which country are you joining from today? Let me see. Can I say what I'm doing tonight? Sure, sure, go ahead, Leila. Tell me in the chat box, what are you doing tonight? Okay, Kelsey, you said my bedroom. <laughs> That's a good spot. <laughs> A good spot to join from, right? It's a relaxing Friday evening. Brielle, Canada, do it to me. Canada, uh, right, Brielle? That's true. It's very relaxing. Um, you're, oh, you're carving a pumpkin. Yay! That's so awesome. Do you um, roast the pumpkin seeds? Because we love to do, I love roasted pumpkin seeds. So we carve our pumpkin too, or pumpkins, because we get a few. And then, you know, my favorite part is to roast the pumpkin seeds and eat them. I love that. Who Extra else? Extra salt on them. Extra salt. <laughs> I love that. Does anybody else roast their pumpkin seeds? Let me know in the chat box. Let me know. Um, oh, Kelsey says, we'll try that. Yeah, try that. There's tons of recipes online. Um, but it's really simple. You just got to make sure you dry your pumpkin seeds and put some olive oil with a little bit of a pinch of salt and roast it for in, in the oven for, you know, an hour or so. And then okay. you can put more salt on it. And yes, <laughs> once they're done. But they're so yummy and healthy. It's a healthy snack. So, they're and they're good. You All right. Mm -hmm. And you can bring them for lunch too. Uh, awesome. Okay. Uh, or if you're from Canada, yay, Canada's repping tonight. Let me see who else is on. Let me see. Is Micah on from England? I'm going to see if he's on today. He may not be on today. He's usually on. Um, you're from pumpkin because <laughs> you're carving a pumpkin. You're from pumpkin land. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, Mickey, where are you from? I didn't forget today and nobody oh, reminded me I should get a prize for just remembering something. I think I should. <laughs> Where are you from today? Um, I'm just, I'm going to say the kingdom. You're from the kingdom. It's from a show, but I'm going to keep that to you. Oh, okay. If anybody can guess the show that she's talking about, let me know in the chat box. All right. Mickey is from the kingdom. So I think we got everybody where they're joining us from today. And let's see, did we miss any birthdays from last week to this week? So we can wish you happy birthday in the chat box. Did anybody have a birthday? No, Mickey's birthday is coming up next in like, in, oh yeah, it's next week. <laughs> I was going to say two weeks. <laughs> so Mickey's birthday is coming up next week. So we'll wish her happy birthday on uh, next week, Friday uh, for uh, that Kittynomics webinar. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Layla. Thank you. I know it's a good job. I remembered this week. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so I think that is it for roll call and birthdays since I didn't see any birthdays in the chat box. So let's get into our webinar today. All right, so this week, I'm really excited about this because I know really nothing about the pageantry world. So I'm going to be learning lots and lots and lots just like you guys today, okay? So this week we have Miss Natasha Allen. She is Miss Toronto United World 2023. Woo! 
congratulations, Miss Natasha. Natasha Allen is a real estate agent in Toronto and is also Miss Toronto United World 2023. She hopes to use her platform to advocate for better menstruation health services for Canadian women and girls so that they can fully participate in society without having to deal with the limitations that are often associated with menstruation. As inspired by her mother, Natasha became involved in pageantry as a way to sell to celebrate her natural hair. Woohoo! Now this is not Miss Stacy's natural hair, but I do have some underneath. <laughs> God bless um, uh, her natural hair and Afrocentric features. Yes, we love that. Miss Natasha is a strong advocate for pageantry as she believes that it helps to build character and confidence, is an opportunity to make meaningful connections and is a great way to give back to the community. And we love that, right? Those are all the things that we love. So let's give a big Kittynomics round of applause. Hey, Miss Natasha. Hi, Miss Natasha. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. There you go. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I am super excited to be here. Just give me two seconds to share my screen and we will get started. Yes. Um, so while I'm setting this up, can anyone tell me in the chat down below, what is pageantry? Do you know what it is? Oh, let's see. Let's ask in the chat box. What is pageantry? Mickey has raised her hand. Mickey, what do you think pageantry is? Um, basically, you know, like, um, it's like a fashion show or something. Mickey thinks that it's a fashion show. Is that correct, Miss Natasha? Um, partially, yes. It does um, include that as well. Do you know what else it may uh, include? Anybody else? Anybody else um, in the chat box? Oh, Layla says beauty pageant. Mm hmm that's something to do with beauty mm hmm um, see I don't think a lot of kids know about pageantry which is really awesome so that they can learn a lot today like me <laughs> yeah that's great so that'll make my job easier um so that I can let you know what pageantry is so Miss Stacy did a wonderful job in introducing me and letting you know more about me but yes um I am Miss uh, Toronto United World. I do work as a real estate salesperson in Toronto. Um, but in my spare time, I also like to have fun. Um, I'll work and um, I'll play as well. Uh, what they say, uh, work hard and play hard. So I really enjoy working out, maintaining um, my health physically. I like to watch cop shows. So Law & Order SVU is my favorite, Chicago PD. And I also like trying Japanese treats. So I don't know if anyone is familiar, but um, Kit Kat, they have like a special line in Japan uh, oh. where they have like, yeah, you, you've tried them? I haven't tried them. I don't want to go like green tea or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have green tea, they have peach, peach is my favorite, and they have melon. So I'm always like going around the city trying to find new treats that I can try. So if you know of any others, please let me know in the chat so I can look for some later this weekend. I do like their cheesecake. Oh, yes, yes. The Uncle Tetsu cheesecake is my favorite. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, so this evening, I want to speak to you about pageantry, what it is. Uh, why you should compete in pageantry, how to raise money to compete, and the different pageant systems that are available in Canada. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm only going to be speaking from the Canadian perspective. Of course, there are so many others available in the United States, um, in Europe, and other parts of the world. Uh, so if you are from those regions, then please do your own research through Google to find something that is suitable to you. But this evening, we're just going to be focusing on Canada. Okay, so pageantry, someone mentioned that it is a beauty pageant, which is correct. Um, it basically promotes women's empowerment through personality, intelligence, talent, character, and uh, your community involvement. So while the physical aspect um, is often celebrated, and in the past, that kind of was the main focus, uh, but recently, you know, it's been more of a switch towards the holistic approach. So what are you doing for the community? What are you doing to build your personality and your character? Because these are the things that matter as you get older. 
Um, yes, you know, for example, you speak about business and how to start a business. And those skills are great. You want to be a good uh, business person and, you know, have something that is profitable. But in order to run a successful business, you also have to have inward character. Because if you do not relate well with people, then you're not going to have any clients, you're not going to have any investors, you're not going to have anyone that wants to do business with you. So pageantry is a really, really great way to develop these skills, especially from a younger age. If you're not familiar with uh, things like public speaking um, or doing talent shows, these are really, really wonderful ways to develop, to develop those uh, skill sets. And within Canada, there are different divisions um, so that women from all ages can uh, participate. You have Little Miss uh, that starts from as young as I believe age four, all the way up to the Mrs. title for women who are married with children. There are also pageants in Canada for babies. Um, so if you have a younger sibling that also you think that would be good in pageantry that is available as well. And I'll stop um, halfway through the presentation just to get some questions and answer uh, any questions that you have. So why compete in pageantry? Like, why does it matter? Is it only about beauty? Like, who cares about pageantry? Well, no, pageantry, as I mentioned before, is not just about beauty. There are really amazing uh, incentives in getting involved in pageantry. So the first one being you can win cash prizes. So in Canada, I don't know of any systems that offer scholarships outright, but there are many that do offer cash prizes where you can use that money to go towards a scholarship for school later on. So if you win one of the titles, oftentimes when you get the cash prize, it's if you win the national title or your regional title. So for example, Miss World, they have the regional titles from all of the provinces and then you move on to the nationals where you win this ginormous cash prize, sometimes up to like um, $25,000. So you can take that money that could even, depending on what you're studying in school, that could cover your expenses uh, for an undergraduate degree. If you don't decide to do um, undergraduate studies, uh, you wanna study a trade, you wanna go to college or maybe even start a business, that money would be really, really helpful to get your business off the ground so that you don't have to worry about taking out debt, um, a loan through the bank to start that business. Uh, so beyond the cash incentives, you also receive opportunities. So opportunities meaning um, you may be invited by another pageant system to compete in their pageant. So if they see your performance, they see how you presented yourself and you didn't win that regional or that national title, they may invite you to compete uh, for their title or they may say, hey, you know, we saw your performance. We were very uh, impressed. Would you please represent us internationally? So I have a colleague that uh, competed in the Miss World pageant. She didn't win a title. She didn't win a national title, but she was approached by Miss Supranational China to go internationally to, I believe it was Egypt to compete. So she got that really, really wonderful opportunity um, to represent her region, but also to represent her parents' home country um, of China internationally. So that often does happen. Other opportunities are modeling gigs. So you have the opportunity to uh, be featured in print. So like magazines or TV, television, um, Instagram uh, paid opportunities. Um, sometimes those are paid and sometimes they are not. Um, if they're not paid, it's more opportunity for you to build your portfolio and gain more exposure so that you can get more paid opportunities. And then if it is paid, that's wonderful. Again, that's money that you can put towards saving for your, uh, your post-secondary education, starting a business, or if there's something that you've been saving up for, say the new PS, what is it? We're at number five now, PS5 or whatever that comes on in the future. Instead of asking your parents for that money, you can take the money that you earned in pageantry and, and buy something else. Or for those who are looking for prom later on, you can take that money and buy a beautiful, amazing prom, uh, prom dress that you can even wear to a pageant. Yes, question. Nikki has a question. Uh, so I have a question. So yes. how much money do you win when you, if you win like a cash prize? 
So it all depends. Some pageants are smaller, so they may offer less. Some offer like it can be anywhere from like a thousand dollars up to like in the tens of thousands. So like ten thousand dollars, twenty five thousand. It really all depends. Uh, so the more prestigious the title, the more money that you get. Um, but just know that there is a lot more competition because there's a lot more women and boys who want to get that title to get that prize money. So a lot of preparation goes into that. Just like with your business, um, it can be uh, competitive in the business industry. So you want to put a lot of time and resources to build your business and make it stand out so that you can get more clients, essentially. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yes, Miss Stacy. Miss Natasha, what is, is pageants just for girls or is there pageants for boys uh, too? Yes, there are pageants for boys and men, and I'll speak about that later on uh, in the presentation, but uh, it is a big misconception that pageants are just for women and girls. Um, of course, they are more popular and they're more mainstream for women and girls, but no, boys and men can compete as well. There's a Mr. World pageant that was just held last month. Um, so if anyone's interested in learning more about that, um, definitely do your research on that one as well. That's one of the more popular pageants for men. Oh, super cool. Yeah. Um, another benefit in competing in pageantry is that you get to make connections. You get to meet people that can connect you with other opportunities. Um, so I recently spoke at a women's empowerment conference in business, and I was able to meet someone who is well connected in the community and she asked me to or she connected me to someone who asked me to host an award ceremony um, that's going to be taking place next month. Uh, so because of my title, I was able to get that opportunity and be able to connect with other people that way. And you never know who else you'll you'll meet when you make that connection. And again, those can be paid gigs where you can have more money to save up and invest for whatever you want in the future. Um, and if they're not, again, you get introduced to more people where it can be, um, it can lead up to a paid opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, another benefit is that you get to build confidence. So a lot of times people will say, oh, I could never, I could never compete in a pageant. I'm so shy. And you'll often find that the women who succeed the most we're always shy as, as girls growing up. Um, it just, the, 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 the key to it is just to believe in yourself, to know that you can do it. Just like with business, when you want to earn money, you have to believe in yourself. And there's a saying that scared money doesn't make any money. That is very, that's very true. Even in pageantry, um, sometimes you have to trick yourself in that moment and say, no, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm equipped and you walk on that stage and you smile and you present well, and then you walk off stage and say, oh, okay, I finally did it. <laughs> For me and other women I see, like before we go on stage, like we'll just get the jitters out like this. And then we walk on stage and we're graceful and we present well, and then we come off and we're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. It's all about uh, building confidence, believing in your skill set. Um, it's often said that you should never look at another woman and say, oh, you know, I'll never, I'll never place, I'll never get a title because I don't look like those girls. Pageantry is all about your unique beauty as well, your unique qualities. There's something that you bring to the table that someone else may not. Uh, so you want to be confident in that and you want to be able to uh, present that to the world. You have something Whatever you do in the future, whether it's pageantry or not, you have something that you can contribute to the world that other people cannot. There's only one you and that's it. Uh, so yeah, it helps It helps to build confidence. Uh, the more you do it, you feel more in tune with yourself. You feel more beautiful. You're taught how to take care of your physical uh, self as well as your inner. And that, that shows out on stage when you compete. Another benefit is that you get to um, participate in the community. So oftentimes you'll be invited to speak at engagements, uh, to connect with other women and girls, men and boys, um, depending on what your platform may be, certain organizations will reach out to you. So for example, um, I know people that um, their platform is ending poverty. So 
They'll oftentimes be invited by food banks to do a drive to bring money to the food bank or to bring food donations to the food bank. Um, so getting to meet uh, new people, getting to learn about new organizations that you might not have uh, known about before is another uh, wonderful, wonderful benefit that you can get. Um, you get to, yes, Miss Stacy. We had a, oh, sorry, um, we had a great question in the chat. Um, Amanda was asking if there will be links shared to get started with pageants in here. So she wants to know, are we gonna share any links to different pageants so that a person could get started? Yes, um, so I'll share that with you and I'm also gonna outline the different systems later on, but I'll also share the links directly in the chat. And if anyone um, has any questions about pageantry, you're thinking about entering, you need some help with your application, I'll also leave my contact in the uh, chat below and you can reach out to me, I'll be happy to help. Perfect, and also remember that I'll have the links also in our description on the YouTube video that gets posted. So anytime you're watching anything back, that you can, you will always be able to find contact information for every single one of our guests, hosts, our guest experts that come on in the description of that, that said video. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. Amanda says, amazing. My daughter definitely wants to sign up. Woohoo! I'm excited to hear that. That's wonderful. Amazing. Yes, wonderful. The younger, the better. The longer that you do it is the more confident that you become. And then you're able to compete in pageants like Miss Universe and Miss World, the ones that you get to see on the big national international stages on TV it'll definitely put you in the running for that. So that's amazing. Um, really quickly, you also get to develop new skills. So whether that be public speaking, you learn how to pose on stage, you learn how to uh, do the infamous catwalk. Um, it may seem like these things don't really matter, but you'd be surprised, especially as a woman in business, having um, that gracefulness really sets you apart from other people in business. Um, or even at university, when you go and you present um, your research or whatever you may do, being poised and well put together really sets you apart uh, from other people in the room. And last but not least, you get to win a crown. Like who doesn't wanna have a crown? Who doesn't want to be a princess? You know, it's something, it's a, it's a keepsake. You get a sash as well that you get to hold on to forever. Not many people can say that they have a sash or a crown. So that's something that you get to hold on to. And you can even pass it on to later generations uh, to inspire people in your family, your friend circle, whoever, to get involved in pageantry. So that's um, a wonderful skill. And for those who are thinking about going to high school and then later university, all of these things matter to add to your application when you're applying. Because when the admissions look at your application, they say, okay, tell us why you should let us in. Like, what community involvement do you have? Everyone says, yeah, I volunteer at my church. I volunteer at the local homeless shelter. And those are great things to do, but you want to stand out. Not many people, especially in Canada, say that they have competed in a pageant. So if you have that on your application, you can say, I competed in the Miss Canada United World Pageant in the Miss or the Junior Teen um, Division. And while I was competing, I learned these skills, which will make me suitable for your program, your arts program at Wexford um, Collegiate Institute, or in your business program at the University of Toronto Scarborough. It teaches you, it taught me how to um, speak to the public with confidence. These things will um, grab the reader and say, oh, wow, I." I wanna learn more about this person. I wanna invite them to an interview and that could help you get your foot in the door um, and, and propel you to your future. So definitely a nice skill that you wanna have on your resume for sure. So pageantry, like how, how do you compete? Yes, Miss Stacy. Let's ask the kids online if they have any questions so far Please. for Miss Natasha. So far, do you guys have any questions for Miss, for Miss Natasha? Don't be shy, ask away. Who else is maybe thinking now more of pageants? Because you didn't know about pageants before, but who else is now thinking, oh, maybe this is something that I would like to do? I don't know, Mickey? I don't know, Mickey's more of a sports athletic <laughs> person. You can do both. You can do both. The current Miss United World. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, Kelsey says, oh, she's, oh, you're a sports person, Kelsey? I guess that's what you're saying. Uh, in, yep. <laughs> I feel you, but this is something different that you, hey, Brielle, you too, you're more of a sports person, yes. But this is something that you may consider that you may want to do for anybody else out there. I think this is really phenomenal because it's something mm -hmm. that you may not have even thought about or even known about that you could do. Like we learned last week with like detailing nights with Mr. Ryan. A lot of you guys said, now you guys are going to become knights because you didn't know about it before, but now you do, right? So this is amazing. Is there any questions for Miss Natasha so far? Nope. All right, go ahead, Ms. Natasha, you keep going and I'll okay. see if there's any questions along the way. That's wonderful. Before I move on, for those who said they're more into sports, the current Miss United World uh, 2022, she's into weightlifting. And that wow. really helped with her presence on stage. That really helped to add definition. It helped with her posture because anyone who knows what weightlifting, you have to have good posture in order to prevent injury. So that really, really helped her as well. So you can do both. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes. Um, so pageantry can be expensive. So how do you raise money so that you're not paying out of pocket all the time to compete? Because there are girls that you'll see who are in every single pageant year after year after year. And you wonder how on earth are they affording this? Well, the first way is that you can get donations from your friends and family. And if you're younger, um, you can often rely on your, your parents' personal networks to help donate. Um, but again, like they're gonna ask, well, why should I donate? Your grandfather may say, well, why should I donate to that? Tell, who cares about that? Tell me why. And you can say, well, you know, grandpa, I am looking to build my public speaking skills. I wanna become more confident. Um, I'm looking to start a business later on, or I wanna go into university. I want my application to be strong. And I believe that pageantry will expose me to these things. Um, the same could be said for sponsors. So asking local businesses uh, to give you money to compete. You let them know what your platform is. Why are you competing? Why does this matter to you? Uh, do you care about uh, environmentalism? Do you care about um, helping men and women of color start businesses? What are the things that speak to your heart? Um, this gives you more of an opportunity to even think about what you wanna do in the future so that when you're writing up your sponsorship letter, um, you can share this uh, with the local businesses and you can speak from the heart and they can say, okay, yeah, this is, the, this is the person that I would like to invest in and support you on your journey. So those are the two main ways to get money. For me, it was my personal network. Uh, so people that I have done business with, they saw how I do business, they saw how I carry myself and they said, yeah, no problem, we'll give you some money. Uh, even people from my personal network who said, yep, I believe in you, purchase my gown. That can be very expensive, the most expensive thing in the pageant. So I didn't have to worry about covering those expenses. Um, and that's why, again, yes, Miss Stacy. Is there fees to enter the pageants and how yes. do they typically run? And how much do you think, like on average, how much do you spend on being in the pageant? So like, I guess, I guess you need, like, what are the things that you need? Is it like the dress and the mm -hmm. shoes and makeup and hair? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm going off, but I remember seeing on the TLC program. Yeah. <laughs> I am sure. So just, can you tell us a little bit more about like the things that you may need to be in a pageant and what a typical average cost would you be looking at? So to answer the first question, yes, there are often fees, especially with the larger organizations. They can run anywhere from $500 up to $1,000 for an entry fee. Um, and the entry will cover um, like your training as well as just your seat, your, your ability to compete. Uh, so then on top of that, it can cost you another thousand for your room and board. So the hotel, the pageants will not cover that. Um, depending on the type of your, the look that you want, your hair, your makeup, everything can cost you up to $2,000 in total to compete. For the larger organization, let's say that you end up becoming Miss Universe Canada and you're going to the international stage. Um, oftentimes the organization will cover all of those expenses, but just for the little things as well, that can cost you another couple thousand dollars. So it's not cheap, especially if you want to uh, compete in multiple pageants back to back, you could be up to maybe $12,000 by the end of the year. Oh, 
Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it's very important to get involved in your community, have good connections with people so that people can easily write you a check and say, sure, we support you. And local businesses are always looking for ways to give back, but you need to be able to sell to them why they should give back to you and not uh, to somebody else or say, oh, sorry, not at this time. So getting involved, um, being confident, well-spoken, having a good platform, why your platform will make the community better will often get um, a yes from these local businesses that want to give back. Any other questions about how to compete or how to raise money before I move on? Does anybody else online have any questions about how to raise money for pageantry? Do you have any questions? No, no Vicky doesn't. None of the kids do. So uh, perfect. We can go on to our next slide. Okay. And sorry, before I move on, I know it sounds like simple, like, oh, just go ask a business for uh, money, but it can take some time. I've heard of people spending at least a year trying to raise money, um, approaching over 200 businesses to raise money. It does take time. So if you do find yourself in that position, just like with starting a business and trying to get clients, it does take time. Um, don't be down on yourself if someone else raises more money or is able to raise money a lot sooner than you. Just keep at it, stay focused on your vision, and eventually you'll get what you need. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to move on to the different pageant systems. And then I will also later on put them in the chat so that you can do your research for yourself. So the first pageant system, and this is the one that I'm a part of right now, is the Canada United World Pageants. Um, specifically for our viewers at home, they have the junior teen division. Um, so that is ages uh, 12 and 13, I believe. So that's the youngest that you can be to compete. Um, and then I had a photo previously of all the girls and the girl was crying with her crown. That's the junior team division. Um, so that, that includes uh, your ball gown. Um, so instead of a swimsuit for that age, you will, so for all of them, ages uh, eight to 13 are viewers, you won't have to wear a swimsuit, you'll wear fitness gear. So you show what you would wear to maybe gym class or gymnastics or whatever you do outside of school. Um, you get to show that off and show your creativity that way. The next one is the Canada Galaxy Pageants. This one is more popular for the younger audience. They have the Little Miss as young as five um, years of age, preteen and then junior Miss divisions. Um, and it's so cute to see their little gowns and their little uh, ballet flats that you get to wear. Um, it's just a nice way to just feel like a princess and build that confidence from a young age. The next one is the all Canadian pageant system. That one is open to boys and girls ages eight to 13. They also have system for babies as well. And then lastly, we have the Calgary pageants, junior and teen divisions. So if you live in Calgary or the surrounding cities, uh, this pageant system would be for you. Hopefully uh, in the future, there will be more pageant systems in Canada. It's not as robust as in the United States, but pageantry is growing and becoming more popular. Um, also for cultural pageants, um, oftentimes there's like the Filipino community, they have their own pageants, Indian, um, African and black. So if you belong to um, a culture that's outside of Canadian culture, uh, you can just do a quick Google search or look within your community. Sometimes your local uh, community will have a newspaper that may advertise these pageants. You can compete in those ones as well. Any questions before I move on? No, so for like Little Miss and preteen and, and, and junior and so if they're like babies, what do they do <laughs> in those pageants for these little ones? So for those ones, they typically get to show off um, the gowns. So like, um, I'm sure most people are familiar with Honey Boo Boo. You get to just be all cute on stage. Um, there's also the talent competition. So a lot of those girls are in gymnastics. You get to just put on a routine, ballet, um, singing. It's mainly just showing off the personality and allowing um, that little girl to just feel uh, confident and comfortable in stage, on stage. Okay, good to know. I always wonder what, what do they get to do? Hold on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as you get older, 
you're able to compete in uh, the Miss World and the Miss uh, Universe pageants that are very, very razzle dazzle and all over the TV. Yes, those are the ones that we see see on TV, right? Yes, World yes. Miss Universe, awesome. And so do these pageants feed into that? Like, is it like a, you go from this pageant to that pageant to like to Miss Universe? Is that how it works? No, so they're their own separate organizations, but a lot of times um, women and girls who compete in these pageants will often compete in the next one because it really just helps you, uh, trains you for like the big leagues, if you will. Gotcha. Yes. Does anybody else have any questions online? Do you have any questions, Mix? Does anybody else have any questions? No? Okay. All right, go ahead, Miss Natasha. Okay. All right, so that is the end of my presentation. Um, any final questions before we move on to the next portion? Anything at all? No. How do you get ready? Yeah, how do you get ready? I think yeah. <laughs> there must be so much that goes into it. There is a lot. So for the older um, pageants, so the Miss and the Mrs., uh, there is a physical component, so the swimsuit. And you do need to, um, it's more so about your confidence on stage. Um, so getting yourself fit for stage. So there is no body type per se that they look for. Um, but for me, it's making sure that I maintain a good um, workout routine and a good uh, diet so that I can feel confident in my body on stage. Um, it's also making sure that I don't eat bad foods because when I do, I get blemishes and that shows up on my body. So making sure that I'm just staying away from that, exfoliating, um, practicing my walk so that I'm confident and making sure I don't look awkward when I'm walking in my heels, um, making sure that I get my outfits together, uh, speaking at speaking engagements so that I become more confident, things like that. It's it's well-rounded. Yes, Miss Do you get a model? Do you get a... Oh, sorry. I'll get to you, Mickey. Do you get a, a coach to help you with the walk? Is there like, is there coaches that do that? Yeah, there are people who offer those services privately that you can hire. Some of their services are expensive. Um, a couple thousand dollars for the, for the couple months leading up to it. Um, if that's something that you would like your sponsor to sponsor, then by all means, but there's also a lot of resources, especially on Instagram where they give you tips and tricks on how to uh, compete. I'll also put this webpage, it's called Pageant Planet, all the resources for all the divisions um, on how to get ready, the type of questions, interview questions that you would have to answer to prep you for that. So I've also been using Pageant Planet to help with my preparation as well. Ah, good to know. Go ahead, Mickey. Um, so what do you do when you're on stage? You just like stand there? Like <laughs> um, kind of but they add music so it's not as awkward and they want to see like just how confident you are in your swimsuit in your gown how you pose on stage um it's not so much about having the best walk but who is the most confident in their skin you can't be up there and say oh no like i hope no one's looking at me you just own it even if you don't feel the greatest that day you just go up there and you smile and you answer the con the questions with confidence you do research on current events. They, it's all about intelligence as well. So how well versed are you in current events? Um, you don't have to know everything. It's impossible to know everything, but they just want to see how eloquent you are and how you're able to, your stage presence, if you will. Okay. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> awesome. All right, Miss Natasha, I don't think the kids have any other questions in the chat. Okay. It's really quiet today. Is the pageantry something, you guys? <laughs> they must be it's soaking in brand. all the information. Oh, yes, they are. Because this is something I think brand new to a lot of them. So, no worries. So, I'm just going to go over to the game really quickly. Do we still have time for that? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. And they'll um, love Okay. We love games on Kinomics. <laughs> okay, and I'm excited about that too. The games are also my favorite part. So I'm just going to share again. Guess the princess. Yay. Yes. So 
we are going to guess the princesses. I have two categories. So the first one is the more easier one. Um, and it's Disney princesses. And the second one is celebrities. But that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to ruin it. So um, slowly, I'm just going to uh, reveal the different squares. And then the first person in the chat, as soon as you think you know who it is, you type it in the chat. And if you're correct, you earn that point. And then whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Fantastic. All right. I think we're ready to, everybody understand? Is everybody ready? I hope everybody's paying attention. Is everybody ready? Put a one in the chat if you're ready to play the game. Let me see. I'm going to put a one for me. Brielle says one. Yep. Okay. So yep. Have to type in the chat too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We'll bring this closer to you so you can type in the chat. Um, so actually, okay. All right. Perfect. Thank Nikki, you. All right. Let's go. We're ready. I'm going to need your help. So I'm going to ask you to um, tell me a number that you see on the square and that number that you tell me I'll delete. Okay. Oh, okay. And then Ms. Stacy will look at the chat to see who gets the, uh, the question correctly. Okay. Everybody ready? Ready. Okay. All right, Miss Mickey, which, uh, which square? Number three. Oh, you know what? I may need to come out of presenting mode for this one so I can delete. So let me just, perfect. Yes! <laughs> so who was first? Uh, Mickey was. Mickey <laughs> was, okay. Who is it? Princess Tiana, but Kelsey Tiana. says Tiana. Layla says Tiana. Let's see if they're right. Yay! <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> you know that one because that's the movie we watched on repeat in our house when we were little. When Me she too. All right, next one. Give me another number. Okay, let's let the kids pick. So in the chat box, pick another number for us. Okay, five. Number five. Wait, we'll go with five first. Oh, who is that? Oh, I know who that is. I, I know, I know who it is too. I just forgot. Does someone in the chat know? So can you type can you... it in the chat so far. Who do you think? Who do you think? What character is that? Are you type talking the character or what the, the, the Disney movie it was? The Disney princess attached to that character. Oh, the Disney princess. Oh, I know. I know who that is. <laughs> Brielle says, who that? Oh, <laughs> Amanda, Amanda says Mulan. That's what that was my guess. So Let's see. Mulan. <laughs> Let's see. Brielle says, who that? Yay! Ah! Congratulations. Good so job. you know what? Um, I need to keep score so that we know. I have one. So Mickey has one and uh, Amanda has one. Okay. Da, da, da. Sorry. Yeah, I remember that dragon from Mulan. I, I, I remembered it from somewhere. I thought it was from um, Sienna or something. I don't know why, but I just thought of it. it looks like <laughs> Can you spell um, Mickey for me, please? M I K I. M I K I is one. And then who else had a score? Had a point? Amanda. One. Okay. Next. Next okay. <laughs> number. Next well, uh, Kelsey ten. had put 10. She was okay. the next person to put 10. Okay. <gasps> oh! If you know it, put in the chat. First person. Just... So Mickey says Jasmine. Uh, Kelsey says Aladdin. Layla says Aladdin. Who was the first person to say Jasmine? Mickey. Mickey. <laughs> Yay! Got that just from the hands alone. I would have never got that with the hands. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 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 either. Great job. Mickey, you're just killing it. I know, right? I study all my princesses. 
All right, another number. Another number in the chat box. Let's pick another number. Pick another number, everybody. Kelsey says, four. Kelsey, did you pick yet? No, you didn't. So four. Kelsey says four, which is my favorite number. I love four. That's my favorite number. Wow. And then we'll get to the other ones. I don't know how many we have, but. Another number? No, 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 four. We're doing four yeah. now. Number four is here. It's gone. Oh. Um, okay, then do um do nine. That's oh, really number nice four one. is gone. It's not working. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I already deleted it. Oh, are we showing it or no? Yep, it's right here. Right here. Oh, we can't see anything. Can you see my screen? I we can, screen, but, but it's just it's just a blue and black line. Right. So we gotta pick something else. That's the whole point. Like you don't know what you're gonna get. So we keep going. Oh, to okay. So let's exactly. try exactly. Amanda says nine. Number nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then is that a drawing? we don't know what that is. All right, another number. Oh, uh, Brielle says Moana, yeah, and yeah, Layla says me. Layla says Lion King, and then Amanda says Nala, and Kelsey says Moana. So we'll see what we get. Oh, you're so smart! <laughs> there you go. Who said Moana first? Brielle said Moana. Brielle, B R I E L L E. Yeah, E L L E. Yes. Wonderful. How did you get that? Wow, Brielle. That yeah. Amazing. I was like, what? Is that? <laughs> yeah. that, is, that is amazing. You guys all got it. Like Kelsey got it too. That's amazing. I thought Lion King too when I saw this little cliff. I thought it was the cliff, but no, you were paying attention, Brielle, during that movie. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Another number. Oh, uh, let me go back. Hold on. 12. 12. And then next. Micah, week. we did three already. Oh, I know who this is. Well, oh. Did <laughs> you say three? Yeah. So Layla says brave. Orif says brave. Uh, Amanda says Marita. And then Brielle says the redhead girl. <laughs> 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 so who was the first one to say brave that's correct um it was layla how do you spell layla l-a-y-l-a -A. great job layla okay this next round is going to be a little bit more difficult okay so this is the big leagues this is it all right, select a number. Um, All right, you guys pick a number in the chat. Let's go pick a number. Uh, okay. First one, Layla says 20, so we'll go with that. Okay, what? and these are real actual people who competed in a pageant. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> All right, another number. Yeah, let's pick another number. So 13, Amanda says 13. Okay. Oh, I think so. oh, that's a smile. How do you spell that? Okay, yeah. Mickey says Beyonce. No, that doesn't look like Beyonce smile. It is not Beyonce. <laughs> did Beyonce do pageants? I'm yes, not sure. Did. Mm. No, you only get one guess. And Rihanna didn't do pageants. Okay. Well, Ross is taking a guess. Oh, Layla says Miss Toronto. I think she's saying you, Miss Natasha. Me? <laughs> no. Micah says Miss uh, Natasha too. <laughs> no. All right, let's do another number to see who we can, if we can see a better view. Okay, pick it, Mickey. Pick another number. Um, Steve three again. Steve Mickey three. says three. Give me number. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> is that him? Who was that person though? Who was number 13? Um, so it's the same person, it's one big picture. Oh, it's one big picture? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, um, nope, nobody still has it. Okay, um, let's do- Brielle like... says number eight. Yeah, number eight. Okay. <gasps> you guys are smart. I see your strategy, Brielle. 
Who is that? Keep on typing. Mickey says Whitney, type it. Mickey says Whitney Houston. No, but you're close. You didn't type Other. it yet. In the... <clears throat> so Micah says Naomi Campbell. No. Amanda says um, Viola. Are you going to say Viola Davis? Is that what you're going to say? No. No. Can, can you do nine? Yep. I know who this is. <laughs> is anybody uh, else? I, I know, but I'm not going to type it in the chat, but I know who this is. Anybody else in the chat think they know? Okay, another number. I'm going to type it to Miss Natasha, not to everybody. So okay. that I don't ruin. And then you tell me if I'm right. I know. I'm, I'm you are correct, Miss Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else know? All right. Does anybody else know who this is? I think Brielle said number 14. So let's do that. I didn't, I didn't know she did pageants. Mm -hmm. You guys should know this one now. The older one should know. No, they're not going to know a younger version of this person. Okay. Amanda says we're stumped. <laughs> no, well, the person is Oprah Winfrey. Yay! <laughs> yeah, she was Miss Black tw uh, Tennessee in, 19, in the 1980s, I believe. That's amazing. Yeah. That, I didn't know she did pageants, but that yeah. is awesome. It's surprising. <laughs> Do we have time for more? Uh, the kids are like, really? What? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Dilla said, that ain't her. <laughs> <laughs> it is Miss Oprah Winfrey. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's see the time here. Oh, no, we don't. We don't have time for another game, but that was super fun. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Put in the chat box. Did you guys have fun? All I right. Did. I am Brielle says, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Amanda says lots. So much fun. So much fun. That was fun. That one, the last one really stumped us. Until, right? And then I was like, wait, I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> that was that super fun. fun. Thank you so much, Miss Natasha. We had a lot You're of fun. Welcome. Everybody give a big Kittynomics round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Let's wrap up, guys, because it's almost six o'clock. And I don't want to keep you guys much longer on a Friday night. All right. So last question that I asked for every Kittynomics webinar, what would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer is real change that impacts the world. Why do we say that? Because we think and we know that you guys are going to do phenomenal things as you get older. And those phenomenal things are gonna be things that are going to change the world. And you guys are going to make an impact. Why? Because you guys are super smart because of all the things that you guys have learned along the way and Kittynomics is part of your learning. So kudos to you guys. And I cannot wait until I'm walking down the street one day 20 years from now, and somebody says, I remember watching you on Kittynomics, and I learned so-and-so, and I became so-and-so, and I'm going to jump for joy if I'm able to still jump. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> right, Miss Toronto? That's yes. Awesome. If you see the little old lady, please help me across the street. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Always remember kindness, kindness, kindness. Yes. All right, so. We call you guys our Young Financial Literacy Ambassadors. Why? Because you guys are our authorized messengers and representatives out there in the real world. And I know that you guys do this because you go ahead and you tell your friends and your family and your aunties and your uncles and your cousins about, well, I learned this about credit cards and I learned this about pageantry. And did you know that you can earn this money in pageantry or whatever it is that we're talking about for this for that week? So I know that you guys do share the information that you learned on Kittynomics and that makes you guys ambassadors. And with the knowledge that you guys learn here on Kittynomics, we believe that our knowledge is our- Superpower. Superpower. So please go ahead and share it because literally the more you share it, the stronger you become, okay? Okay, schedule. 
for the upcoming weeks. So next week we have Miss Sandra and we're going to be talking about Stocks 101. So we're gonna go back to investing because we've been talking to you guys about how to make money, how to build a business, how to start creating money and wealth for you. And so we're also going to be talking about what you can do with that money. So we're gonna be going back to stocks. We're gonna be doing Stocks 101 next week. And then the following week, this is our uber special guest, okay? Mr. Wes Hall, I love this picture. Can everybody see it? This is Mr. Wes Hall when he was a child and his book is called No Bootstraps When You're Barefoot. My rise from a Jamaican plantation shack to the boardrooms of Bay Street. I cannot wait to read this book, but Mr. Wes Hall is the newest dragon on Dragon's Den. I've been telling you guys about this. Mr. Wes Hall is going to be on Kittynomics this Kittynomics, I want you guys to share with all of your friends and family. This is one not to be missed because you guys will actually be able to ask a dragon that you see on TV that people would, would love to have this opportunity to get to, get to pick the brain of a, of a dragon, right? So I want you guys to make sure that you guys join on November 4th because that is going to be an uber, uber special kittynomics, okay? Layla, no worries. If you're not here next week, we'll see you the following week. Don't miss the one with Wes Hall, okay? We definitely want to make sure that you're there. But you're, you'll miss the one for Mickey's birthday. <laughs> so don't worry. And you can always watch it back. <laughs> but we'll miss you, okay? All right. Um, okay. Uh, do you guys like our t-shirts? We are trying to raise funding for to grow our Kittynomics platform. We are trying to make Kittynomics into a global platform where kids around the world, um, locally, nationally, and globally, but you know, think globally, expand, uh, think locally, expand globally. We want everybody to learn financial literacy. So we are trying to grow our platform and raise funding for that. So if you like our t-shirts, we love our future trillionaire t-shirts. There is no trillionaires right now. And we believe that the world's first trillionaire will come from the Kittynomics community. So we are claiming it, we believe in it, and we are, we are putting it on our t-shirts because out there in the world, with you guys on Kittynomics, I believe one of you guys will become the world's first trillionaire. So don't forget us when, you know, if you see Miss Natasha walking across the street, or if you see me at the grocery store, don't forget about Kittynomics. <laughs> All right. If you have any questions on our t-shirts, or if you'd like to order one, please send me an email at kittynomics101 at gmail.com. Never do so without your parents' permission though, okay? All right, and of course, every single week, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys have any questions, if you want to see something on Kittynomics, a guest speaker, a guest speaker, anything like that, please email me at kittynomics101 at gmail.com. Never without your parents' permission, because you know what? I need different ideas sometimes, right? Um, on who should come on and what you guys want to learn. This is all for you. The platform is for you, okay? And sometimes you may not think it has to do with financial literacy because you may not think, you know, pageantry doesn't necessarily come to mind about financial literacy, but there's so much to learn in that pageant world. And there's so much that you can, you know, you can make income and you can grow and you can gain confidence and you can, you know, meet connections to help you along in your, in your ideas, your business ideas or whatever it is. If you're going to cure cancer, you never know the connections that you can make. So I love that we had this topic on Kittynomics. It is such an awesome topic to talk about and a world that we should explore. So, and of course, if you guys find value in the content that we provide here in Kittynomics, please like and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok, okay? All right, thank you, Miss Natasha, for a wonderful presentation. You did an amazing job. Thank you. Round of applause again for you. Everybody have a fabulous week. We'll see you next week for Stocks 101 and bye. <laughs>